Hey careers, it's Kimberly Rob Baker with This Little Brand and I'm coming to you today with a bit of a mea culpa. I failed somebody this week and I thought there was a good lesson in it for me and for you. Here's what happened. Uh, a prospective client reached out to me. Let's call him James. So James reached out. He's an operations expert. He has saved $29 billion collectively for uh, the Fortune 100 companies he's worked for in the past 15 years alone. He is a Six Sigma expert and he knows all about lean operations and Kaizen and all that good stuff. Um, and he also has a special gift for putting it all together and seeing how things like that fit into an environment and coming up with you know customized methodologies when it's needed. And he came to me because he is facing a problem that a lot of my clients face, executives, senior executives. He's never had to look for a job before because he's so good that he kept getting recruited and having offers and, you know, COO offers, high-level consulting offers, and he's just been having a good old time and now suddenly the phone's not ringing. And he's got these great contacts on his, you know, in his speed dial, in his phone. They're famous CEOs, ones that you'd know because they have books on the bestseller list. But the problem is they're all retired. It's sort of the old guard that he's in contact with. And he needs to reach out to the new C-level executives and the new board members and get them to understand his value. So he and I had a great conversation. We talked about the fact that it's not just putting your accomplishments down because there are younger people than him who are connected with the people, those people who have uh, impressive accomplishments as well but it has to go deeper than that. And what that means is business storytelling, it means branding. So it means not just uh, an initiative to centralize global operations that saved $972 million a year. Okay, that's a typical bullet you'd see on a resume. No, it means, well, how did you bring those people together with all the cultural and, um, and legal differences across these borders? What opportunities did you see there for more cohesiveness as a business? How did you align this process with the multinational organization's overall goals? And now once you start to get this kind of context, it does a couple of things. So first of all, it lets the reader know, not only are you extraordinary, but it gives them empathy for you as an executive in thinking through this, and it gives them empathy for the other company because they've been in those situations. They've had to raise margin in order to be ripe for an acquisition or an IPO. They've had to do all those things. And when you um, give the details of how things happened, it lets them know, or lets them imagine how you would behave in their environment, how you could add value specifically to them. The other thing that gathering those stories does is it lets us build an organic brand. So. When you look at these stories that you collect of things that you've done, where are the common themes across all of those? So yeah, maybe you know everything there is to know about operations and lean operations and process improvement, but it's actually your ability to get people working together on the same team, your ability to connect and build relationships and empower your team. Maybe that's why you've actually gotten so much done. Maybe it's your ability to communicate both with those frontline workers all the way up to the CEO and be that confidant of the CEO. So the brand and the context, and that's all things that just get, that get built. And this is really the real work of your career communications. Then you take that and you put it on a resume, you put it in a LinkedIn profile, you put it in a cover letter, you, you know, you read over, um, that those main points before you go into an interview so that you're grounded in who you are and the value that you bring. And that's where the power is. And that is what gets people moving forward in their career in the most productive way possible. So we have this talk and he's excited and he's like, oh, Kim, this sounds like exactly what I need. And I'm excited because he, for the first time in his career, is going to have a chance to proactively choose from all these possibilities he's going to create with his communications. And he needs to talk to his wife about it. And that is awesome because I talked to my spouse too about any big investments. And he kind of came back the next day and said, well, what would it be for just the resume? And I don't know if you can hear, I'm just getting over a cold. So I was a bit fuzzy, fuzzy brained. And I was, I kind of was thrown off because I thought he understood 
what he needed to do and that it wasn't just, you know, putting things on a page. And I said, well, it wouldn't be that much difference to do just the resume versus the other things that are in my communications package because, you know, that big work that we do is that brand and the story. And that's where the power is. And he's like, yeah, yeah, but I just, I just need a resume. You know, I can send it to my contacts. And, and I, I kind of said, well, this is what it would be for the resume, but that's, that's not what you need. And, and, you know, he said, well, okay, I'll, I'll get back to you. And I felt so bad because I don't care if he works with me or not. I'd love to work with, with him because this is what I love to do, help people. But even if he works with somebody else, what I felt bad about was that I didn't dig deeper. I didn't say, well, why are we back to the conversation of it just being the document? When you know that to make this big leap, to make your last big contribution in your career, you need that deep branding. Why are we back to, oh, I just need a resume? And I wish I had dug deeper there. And um, I felt bad that he kind of was tootling off into the world with that impression. And in fact, I did leave him a voicemail (laughs) <laughs> saying, <laughs> pleading that, you know, he really, really, really needs a strong brand and a strong story to go forward and do what he wants to do. Um, so that's it. That's my learning of the week that I need to kind of follow that thread a little bit deeper. If I'm going to do well, even by somebody who's just a prospect, anybody I touch, I don't want them to leave thinking that they don't have to have that deeper story, whether they do a lot of work. I mean, Resume Rad Magic is a fantastic book if you want to write your own resume. I have colleagues I can refer people to if I'm not somebody's cup of tea. Um, but no matter how you do it, you've got to have that brand and that deeper story. If you're going to make a big leap like that, don't kid yourself that there aren't other talented people out there um, who have numbers to put on their resume too and who have a great degree to put on their resume too. Your story and your strong brand will trump those if they are in alignment with with the company. So that's our lesson for today. Happy Friday. Take care.